Good morning and welcome to Allen Avenue Unitarian Universalist Church online and now in-person uh, worship service. I'm Troy Moon, I'm, my pronouns are he, him, his, and I serve on the board of trustees. Our mission calls us to celebrate diversity, encourage spiritual growth and promote social responsibility while we travel with care on this earth. Every month, Allen Avenue supports a nonprofit organization whose mission and work aligns with our Unitarian Universalist principles. To share the plate recipient uh, for September is Family Promise, a program our congregation is deeply connected to and supports throughout uh, ongoing engagement with families. Family Promise mission is to help families experiencing homelessness and low-income families achieve sustainable independence through a community-based response. Please note there was an error in the long version of the order of service online. Musa will be our share the plate in October. And so we're so glad you've joined us today for our special in-gathering water ceremony. If you're joining us from home on Zoom, please take a moment to introduce yourself and where you're worship worshiping from this morning. And thanks again for coming and bearing with us as we try our first outdoors um, congregational meeting and worship service. So thank you again, thanks again for coming. Oh, one more note. So we're gonna be doing the offering this morning and we have ushers who will be coming around. So please let the ushers come to you. Um, that'll make things much easier. So just sit tight and they'll, and they'll come visit you. All right, thanks so much. I'd like to let you know also there are full scripts of the service and John Howard might know where those are. Copies of the full script. So if you raise if you raise your hand, John will give you a copy. Yeah. Our call to worship words are those of the Reverend Molly House Gordon. We gather this morning tenderly, like drops of dew on a leaf of grass. Hopefully, like gathered raindrops in a cloud. Gleefully, like water rushing in a stream to the sea. Deeply, like groundwater pulled up from a well. We gather from every direction for another year of growth and depth, another year of companionship and hope, another year of learning to love this world. We gather like the water that joins us across all creation, the water that connects us within and without merging and flowing across the entire world. Like the river, I've got peace like the river in my soul. 
Our chalice lighting words today are the words of Katie Gelfin, the spirit of water. We light this chalice as a symbol of reunion. We reunite in this outside sanctuary to share the flow of our hearts with one another. We gather today in ritual to celebrate our fountains of joy, to hold each other through storms of grief, to guide one another through rapids of transformation, to rest together on ponds of stillness, 
Together, we honor the spirit of water, its many forms, and its life-giving essence. This story is by my religious educator colleague in New Orleans, Katie Galfan. Can everyone hear me okay in the back? I didn't think so. Um, what about now? Is it better? Keep talking. Okay, I'll try to speak up too. Once upon a time, in a time that is both this time and no time, at the turning of the ninth moon of the year, four women journeyed from four different directions to share a moment of sacredness together. Each carried a pitcher of water from her home, embedded with the stories and emotions of her life and community. They congregated around an empty vessel, united in the desire to listen to the stories and hearts of one another. The youngest woman came from the east with the spirit of air. As she poured water from her pitcher into the vessel, she shared stories from her home about the excitement of children being born the music of laughter that fragranced the neighborhoods and the bliss of young people falling in love. As she shared the story of her heart, she laughed and drops of liquid joy burst from her mouth and landed inside the vessel. The four women paused to honor the stories from the East and the spirit of the woman who shared them. The mother came from the south with the spirit of fire. As she poured water from her pitcher into the vessel, she shared stories from her home about adapting to the ever-changing world of motherhood, the challenges of navigating family life, and the difficulties her community faced with transitions in leadership. As she shared the story of her heart, a drop of sweat formed on her brow and landed inside the vessel. The four women paused to honor the stories from the South and the spirit of the woman who shared them. From the West with the spirit of water came the sovereign woman. As she poured water from her pitcher into the vessel, she shared stories from her home about friends and loved ones who had died, the grief of those who missed them, and the deep pain she carried for the wounds humans have inflicted on each other and our world. As she shared the story of her heart, a tear of sadness fell from her eye and landed inside the vessel. The four women paused to honor the stories from the West and the spirit of the woman who shared them. From the North came the elder woman with the spirit of earth. As she poured water from her pitcher into the vessel, she shared stories from her home about the peace she found in solitude the comfort she found in witnessing the changing of the seasons and phases of the moon, and the renewal she felt when sharing her wisdom with those who would listen. As she shared the story of her heart, a tear of joy fell from her eye and landed inside the vessel. The four women paused to honor the stories from the North 
and the spirit of the woman who shared them. Now between the four women was a vessel filled with the waters of joy and happiness, change and transition, grief and loss, and rest and renewal. Mingled together in harmony and blessed by the women through their reverence and love for each other, the empty vessel of water was now a full vessel of compassion. Each woman took out a small container and filled it with water to bring back to her home to share the spirit of understanding and compassion with her own community. The first water communion was created in 1980 by two Unitarian Universalist women. Carolyn, <coughs> Carolyn and Lucille Longview. They developed it for a worship service at the Women and Religion Continental Convocation of Unitarian Universalists. As they shaped the service, McDade and Longview wanted to create a new ritual that spoke to our connectedness to one another, to the totality of life, and to our place on this planet. And they write, water is more than simply a metaphor. It is elemental and primary, calling forth feelings of awe and reverence. Acknowledging that the ocean is considered by many to be the place from which all life on our planet came. It is the womb of life. And that amniotic waters surround each of us prenatally. We now realize for this worship service, this is a new story of creation. We chose water as our symbol of empowerment, they say. They asked eight different women, each coming from a different direction, as Emily's story noted, to bring water from all around the world. Water is powerful. Our presence here today is powerful. It has been a long, long time since we've been able to be together both in person and now online. We bring waters that come from and or symbolize faraway places, waters that come from very near, that perhaps symbolize transitions or moments or people who are dear to us, or waters that share where we came from as we enter this space together this morning. And we will gather our waters in a community bowl, mindful that though every last one is separate from another, that together we form an interdependent web of life that can never be separated no matter where our journeys take us. This gathered water will be the water that sustains us in ritual. After our service today, the water will be boiled and we will boil the hell out of it. So it will be holy water. <laughs> There's a water journal if you haven't yet found it with Laura Burden, where you can write your name and where you gathered your water from. I invite you, as you come forward to bring your water, if you brought some with you, and if you didn't to come forward and share some from one of the pictures on the table, and then come to the microphone and just share what the meaning of that water is for you or what the connection is. I'll begin by adding my water that represents my family, Kate, and my adventures just around Maine.
This was water from a state campground. Watching their children grow up, become adults, it's pretty crazy. And our dream bridge, my water symbolizes the water that's gone out of balance in this world with droughts and lack of water in some parts of, the, of this planet and floods in others. And our spiritual, moral, and ethical commitment to restore that balance. I'm Suzanne Federer, and the water I brought represents all the places I kayak this summer which gives me a great sense of freedom. Ours is a collection of water coming from a trip to Bermuda and two beloved places, Ferry Beach and our cottage in Westmead Field Lane. I'm Sue Malcolm, and my water is from the little tiny town landing beach in Falmouth, where I had a number of wonderful swims this summer. Keith Williams, this is water extracted from the air, and to me, it is important for life, not only for me, for all humans, but for animals, plants, living beings. When I go to my new home in Lisbon, I cross the Androscoggin River. It's magnificent. It reminds me of what a huge state this is. And it just, it just changes my perspective. I'm Clay. This is recycled water, elemental and essential. Without it, I wouldn't be here. I'm Lisa. This water that I contributed is from Little Sebago. Um, early in the pandemic, it was the first place that I was able to gather with my family. It was wonderful to be in person. I'm Judith and my water is from my home in South Portland. And I'm feeling a lot of gratitude for the home that I have in the community that I have there. And most of all, feeling grateful to be back with you. I am Mary and my water is also from my home and without it, I could not make my coffee. <laughs> I'm Janet, and my water comes from Sebago Lake, a place of many memories and a great deal of fun. I'm Connie, and my water I brought today is from Panther Pond in Raymond, where every morning I experience my rebaptism. I'm Barbara, and the water that is neglected at home in my pantry came from vacation with family, and that was more meaningful in this year of pandemic than at any time. And even with a rotten back, I could still get in and out of a kayak, which was an unexpected delight. Hi, I'm uh, David, and the water I added to the bowl uh, was to symbolize water that's desperately needed by people in other parts of the world. We do pretty well water-wise, but some people, it's a real struggle. I'm Sam Sherry, and the water which I added symbolizes the raunchy water that comes out the tap at my office, which is the only place I could go for months. Kathy Sherry, and the water symbolizes uh, time with family in Rhode Island, um, new babies, and new relationships and boating on the water and 
And also uh, what was mentioned in the ceremony of, um, you know, tears and grief of everyone around the world during 9-11, uh, anniversary, and also during um, COVID and all the struggles. But tears of joy for hope, too. I'm David Laurie, and my wife and I brought this water from Vermont, where our son and grandchildren live, uh, near Barry, Vermont, and uh, we don't get there often enough. I'm Nancy, and as usual, my water is from Perry Beach. And this year, in addition to attending a wonderful week, I had the honor of being able to volunteer and help out there, and it felt really great. And I will top off our collection with the water that was gathered here last year, which will anchor us through time and ministry. Let this water be a blessing by our joining together, holding the holy stories and memories of our lives year after year. Let this water be a blessing throughout this upcoming year as we celebrate and dedicate ourselves to the littlest among us, the future of our faith. Let the spirit of this community gathered from the many gifts here this morning be present for us in our time of need, reminding us that we are never alone. Let this in-gathering ritual ground us in the reminder of love and let this water be a visible reminder that when we combine our gifts, we are creating beloved community. I invite you now to join me in speaking our response found in your order of service. From you, I receive, to you, I give. Together we share, and by this we live. And I invite you into the spirit of prayer or meditation as is your practice with the words of the Reverend Jude Geiger. Spirit of life, God of many names, source of love. Help us to enter this new year with a spirit of renewal. Open our hearts to the possibility of abundance. Open our hands to do the work of what the year brings to us with meaning and integrity, with care and love. Prepare our lips to speak with truth and care. All of these blessings will be needed to prepare the road ahead for justice and healing. We pause once more, as some do every day, to remember the lives lost 20 years ago on a Tuesday morning. We mourn the friends we can no longer greet. We hold in our hearts the families that are missing a parent, a sibling, a child. We acknowledge that new generations have seen its innocence of worldly anguish pass away, knowing that each of us must wrestle with memory and loss in our own ways. We pray for strength of heart to face these difficulties with integrity that we know deep down that a warm community sits all around us ready to stretch out a hand so that the way ahead is a little bit less cumbersome, less solitary, less strange. May our memory and our grief not alter our prayerful convictions for a world of hope and love. May the harm done that fateful day not deter our spirits one inch 
from a path of building that world we dream about. May we not learn to become creatures of reaction, recreating harm in the world around us or the harm done in our cities and on our plains. This morning, we keep close in our hearts the families and friends we once knew. We rejoice in the stories where a caregiver, sibling, or child arrives home late at night to a welcoming and grateful family. And we also rejoice for a congregation spread throughout the country who have learned to break bread and share in worship across religious aisles, who appreciate the shared message of love and healing that are taught by Christians, by Jews and Muslims, by religions worldwide. It is in this spirit that the world may one day know true peace and connection.
you don't have to believe in God, but please collapse in wonder as often as you can. Try and let your knowledge be sideswiped by awe. And let, your, and let beauty be so persuasive, you find yourself willing to lay your opinion at your feet. Darling, you don't have to believe in God, but please pray for your own sake. Great prayers of thanks for the mountains, the great rivers, the roundness of the moon, just because they're here at all and that you get to know them and let prayer bubble up in you like a song in a bird as a natural thing. You don't have to have a spiritual path, but do run the most sensitive part of your soul over the soft curves of this world with as much tenderness as you can find in yourself and let her edgeless ways inspire you to want to discover more. Just find a way that makes you want to yield to yourself, that you may be more open to letting beauty fully into your arms and feel some sacred spark inside of you that yearns toward learning how to build a bigger ire of love in your heart. You don't have to believe in God, but get quiet enough to remember we really don't know a damn thing about any of it. And if you can, feel a reverence to be part of this great something, whatever you want to call it, that is so much bigger and so far beyond the rooftops of all of our knowing. Each week, volunteers, staff, work creating program programs for fellowship, spiritual enrich enrichment, connection, working toward justice. It takes all of us together to create community, this community that we refer to as A2U2. Now is the time in our service where we have an opportunity to engage the act of generosity, financial stewardship, the Share the Plate recipient for September is Family Promise, a program our congregation is deeply connected to and supports. Family Promise's mission is to help families experiencing homelessness and low-income families achieve sustainable independence through community-based response. Please note there was an error in the long version of the order of service, noting that Musan, main UU social action network would have been the share the plate, but that is actually next month. Our morning offering will be gratefully received and I invite you to note if this is a check for the share the plate or your pledge.
water has a place in many religious traditions and ancient scriptures. In the Quran, where the word we is used to refer to Allah, chapter 21, verse 30 says, have the faithless not regarded that the heavens and earth were interwoven and we unraveled them and we made every living thing out of water. Will they then have faith? The first book of the Torah, Genesis, chapter one, verse two says, the earth was formless, void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And in Genesis chapter six, verses one through eight and 22, Moses staff splits the Red Sea, permitting the Israelites safe passage and deliverance from Egypt. And in Exodus chapter 14, 21 to 22, later the Ark of the Covenant similarly parts the Jordan River as the Israelites reach the promised land. And in the Christian scripture, Revelations chapter 22, verse 17, it says, come and let everyone who hears say, come and let everyone who is thirsty, come. Let anyone who wishes to take the water of life as a gift. In our Unitarian Universalist faith, water has become a symbol of our gathering together to create beloved community. It is used in child dedication ceremonies when as a community we dedicate ourselves to the lives and families of our youngest. Water gathered in ceremonies like we are celebrating today has been used to bless hands during ordinations and ministerial installations, which by the way, May 1st, put it on your calendar, we will have our very own installation. It has provided sacred connections as one nears death. The water last year gathered here at A2U2 was sent home to those of you who participated in last year's church at home subscription. Perhaps the water found its way into the earth near your home, or perhaps a few of those drops joined others to nourish your garden. Water is complex and impacts each of us differently. It can be a force of destruction. It is necessary for life that some of us have access to and some of us don't. It is the beginning of our time. It's contamination and shifting, reflecting our destruction of the earth. For some here today, water may be a reminder of past Unitarian Universalist rituals. For some of us, water may bring back memories of years past. When I was a young girl, my family used to describe me as a fish. If there was an opportunity to remain in the water, that is where I was. It didn't matter if there was anybody else to play with or not. I found great joy and a sense of peace in the water. I loved swimming and floating around. Great Pond in Belgrade, Maine was the body of water I spent the most time in. Cumulatively, I suspect there is no other body of water I've ever spent or will spend as much time in. Some of the stories of being there anchor me in early experiences in my life. It is in this water I learned how to water ski. And it's in this water where my father and brother showed exceeding patience in teaching me how to drop one of those skis. 
as a family, we traveled across this water to go to the day's store where we would get gas and pick up a few necessities. And this water surrounded what at the time seemed like a huge island where I first went to overnight gymnastics camp for a week and where I don't know how she managed to get it there in seven short days, but I received a care package with homemade whoopie pies from my mother. It was August 16, 1977 when I was in this water and our neighbor came running over, alarmed. I was 13 years old in my own world, floating around and swimming in the pond. He screamed, Elvis is dead. He was alarmed. He peaked an all time high in his hollering. I was a little mystified really, not realizing the iconic impact at the time. I thought to myself, what are you so upset about? Like it's a nice day, get in the water, swim. Years roll by. It's January 5th, 2018, and a day of touring the Sea of Galilee, the Mount of Beatitudes, and the hometown of Mary Magdalene, one of my favorite women who show up in the Christian scriptures. I find myself later in the day swimming in the Jordan with a few other travelers during a border crossing class with Andover Newton Theological School. Now, I had already graduated, but they kind of let me sneak in anyway. They had an opening. So I was fortunate to get to be on this trip with them. Days before this opportunity, I debated back and forth with my UU friends. Was I going to participate in this particular Christian ritual? And it wasn't until I spoke with Professor Greg Mobley at the time that I decided I would. During our discussion, we talked about how the many expressions of faith prayed their tears on Mount Gilead, the Mounts of Moab, and the Galilean Heights. Prayers to the gods and goddesses, prayers for peace, prayers for healing tears of grief and hope, tears of celebration and tears of joy, had dropped down into the earth, wrapped up into the waters and traveled down to the Jordan River. How could I not want to float around in this centuries filled basin? So there we were, a Baptist and a Unitarian Universalist in the Jordan together engaging in a baptismal ritual. Following our trip in an email, Greg wrote, it's my hope that all the proper nouns in the baptismal formula are meaningful for you, whether in their surface meanings or in their deep meanings as symbols for the transcendent energy that is our source our loci for moments of transformation and our abiding basis for moral sensibility and self-esteem. And that the verbal sequences from feeling dead to feeling alive to living with courage and self-acceptance are terms that you can translate so that they match your own intuition and language about the great mystery. A Baptist and a Unitarian are together in the Jordan. It sounds like a beginning of a joke, but it really wasn't. The language of renewal connection with this great mystery that's about us, that's within us and between us, is what the Jordan anchors for me. As Unitarian Universalists, we celebrate inherent worth and dignity of all people, and we acknowledge our interdependence with each other what we all bring for gifts to Allen Avenue Unitarian Universalist Church matters. Like drops of dew on a leaf of grass, water rushing into the stream, onward to the sea, like groundwater 
pulled up. Each of us, each of us is gathered here together, celebrating our Unitarian Universalist water ritual, acknowledging our different life paths, directions, experiences, and expressions of faith. Our individual journeys have brought us to this day and this place. How will we decide to use our gifts this year? Our words of benediction are those of the Reverend Leslie Takahashi. We gather as many drops, each winding our own path down life's surfaces and ruts. Here we pool together as a single body, flowing together for a time. Together we are a stream, at times even a river for with our shared force, we can travel toward oceans of meaning and seas of connection. May our lives be richer and may our hearts be fuller because of our place in this community. And may we touch the world with our love. And following our postlude, those of you at home will be offered an opportunity to go into some breakout rooms by Keith and Jane Prairie, whom I'd like to thank for our Zoom technology today. <laughs> 